Uh, I think I feel like they they knew slowly because you know like conversion isn't like a like one day like oh I want to be Muslim you know? like definitely there's the moment that you say the shahada right but because I live with her so there's there's no way you know, like she doesn't see oh no more pork eating no more alcohol drinking you know okay so for me I think my family already knew that I was going to convert and in fact my mom was asking me have you converted <laughs> so yeah that, that it was at that stage and I thought okay la, let's not delay you know uh, for me it was also a bit different uh, as a 19 year old kid, I thought it was a good idea to send a mass text to my family group They wanted to become a Muslim Anyone watching that, don't do it It's, it's not a wise choice like, I literally got bombarded with messages like saying like, You do not have permission from your family You know, you're just 20, you're just 19, you know, you, you can't do this But, and then I realised that was the wrong move lah, I did it la. <laughs> Totally backfired, I was like, dude, this sets my timeline back a few years man And then, um I think the second time round, about three months later, um, I went through my mom's work. My mom was supportive. And so I feel like in a Chinese family, when the mother is supportive, the parents are supportive, they, they kind of hold like um, the final say, even towards the extended family. So she really helped me hold the fort. Like she says, okay, I'm supporting him. Um, maybe maybe he might do well, or he, he might not do well, but her belief is that um, my actions, my consequences, there's no one else that can um, bear the consequences for me. So naturally, I should be the one that can make the decisions. So she just didn't want to me to make the best decision because I was 19, I was 20. Still kind of sending like things to WhatsApp groups, thinking that that was solve the issue. So yeah, probably not in the right mind at the whole time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kids learn from this incident. <laughs> she probably is a book, uh, like misadventures, you know. Yeah, of Chinese Muslim in Singapore. <laughs> Actually, I was, to be honest, I was afraid. So the conversation came up, not by, not, uh, I did not start the conversation. It was more of uh, my mom actually found uh, this English Quran translator book at my uh, study table. So then she asked me, so uh, how, why do you have this? Then I explained to her that I'm actually, this was during a very difficult period. So she did kind of understand because uh, I did uh, bring back home a Bible, uh, the Quran and the Hindu scripture, I can't pronounce it well, so I'm not going to go there. So, um, yeah, so I was exploring these three. So to her, it was more of, I ha have not decided which religion or which was my true calling at that point. It was a difficult start. She was against it. She had a lot of fear of what the media spread, of what people spread of the social stigmas behind being a Muslim when it actually isn't. So yeah, she, it was this fear that uh, actually kept uh, uh, where she wanted to convince me otherwise that I shouldn't convert or the telling me things like if I convert, people are going to disturb you and uh, but uh, it's going to be harder for you when you travel overseas or find a job. Plus, my mom is actually a Malaysian. So that time, I gave her a call and... Oh, actually, she gave me a call and, she, and then after I decided to tell her. Then initially, she thought that I have a Malay boyfriend, but I said I don't. I actually do it for, for my own sake. Then, my then after that, it's like during Ramadan where I want to try fasting. I wasn't a Muslim yet. Uh, then my sister, uh, my sister actually uh, like curious that why I didn't sleep. Uh, why am I like looking for, uh, looking the religion about Islam. So one night, they were like actually curious. I was like reading and waiting for Saho and then they discover. So they were like super shocked and don't know what to don't know what to say. Then yeah, I mean after that, uh, they she I mean both of them accepted. My father is the last one to know because he's very drama dramatic. Because after learning about Islam, I felt that I wasn't a good daughter to him. So I decided to tell him. Uh, I write all my scripts in Mandarin. Then I asked him to read. But after that nightmare nightmare came, uh, because he because my father started come in to the house and he started screaming for my grandmother. Yeah, I started to scream for my grandmother. Then after that, then after that, um, he, 
he screamed uh, Then after that, I told him that I, ne- I was like trying to hold my tears So I, I was like oh, I need to go for a job interview He said, oh, okay, okay Go, go, go Then after that, I go I was like texting my I uh, texting my uh, So-called My foster sister Texting my own sister Then I had a realisation that After texting all those people The only person who can help myself Is myself and Allah So yeah, so I decided to hold the tears. So that's the challenge that I had. Actually, I only open up to my mother. She's like, um, she's the closest person I am with in the entire world. So I actually start asking her about Christianity because I wanted to understand. Also. And slowly after that, I told her like, actually, mom, I'm. You know, I'm studying Islam and she said, yeah, I know, I can see your Islamic books on the, in your room, you know, and she was, I would say mostly disappointed and her reaction is out of love and fear and, you know, this need to protect your daughter, you know, as a mother, you, all you want is to, to protect your daughter, so, you're, you're still young, you still have so much to learn about, are you sure you really want to do this? So, mostly she wants me to educate myself more, you know? Um, and I think that's also very important. So, yeah, she's like, listen to mommy. So, yeah, I want to listen. I, I mean, I would. I don't know. Yeah. Um,